on the Rose Table, we are hosting a patriotic pool party, but first, you guys are always commenting and asking me for the behind the scenes of my parties. So I thought we'd go way, way behind the scenes and come out and pick some blueberries. I'm here at beautiful Blaze Family Farm in Rockwall, Texas, and we're gonna pick some blueberries to make my famous Blueberry Hill surprise. Let's go. Oh, and don't forget your official Blaze Family Farm blueberry pick and bucket. You guys, this place could not be any cuter. Not only do they have blueberries in the summer, but they also have a pumpkin patch and petting zoo in the fall. It is so cute. If you're a Gilmore Girls fan, it is very Stars Hollow. If you're a theater kid, this is when you start singing, into the woods, into the woods. I love this little hike. So peaceful in the morning. Is this not so pretty? Now, this might sound obvious, but you just want to pick the ripe blue ones and leave the other ones. And my Blueberry Hill surprise, the surprise you soon will see is that it looks like blueberry pie, but instead of pie crust, it's technically a sugar cookie crust. Kind of, it's, it's like a German Kuchen crust actually, but it, it tastes like sugar cookie. It's one of the very first, in fact, it, I would consider it, it is the first recipe that I ever created. I used to go blueberry picking out at the lake house every summer and just have tons and tons and tons of blueberries. So one year I went rogue and I threw them in like a German Kuchen basically to see if it would work with some cinnamon and some sugar and it was just about the most delicious pie any of us had ever had and I've made it every year for Independence Day ever since, years before I created the Rose Table. But ever since I've had the Rose Table, all my friends were like, Katie Rose, this is so good. Why is this not on your website? And I would always say, you know, this recipe is just too special for me. I feel like Blueberry Hill Surprise is really, at the end of the day, kind of what made me a food blogger. And I don't know, for some reason, I just didn't want to post it on my website like every other recipe because it was just too important to me. So I used to quip with my friends, if I ever have a cookbook, I will put Blueberry Hill Surprise on the cover. So guess what? I got my cookbook deal and I called my mom and I said, we have to go to the lake house and photograph Blueberry Hill Surprise and make it a cookbook exclusive. About a year later, I did put it on my website, so it is on therosetable.com now, but that is the cover of my cookbook, is me sitting at the lake house in front of the lake on the deck with Blueberry Hill Surprise. All right, y'all, look at how many blueberries I got, and that is just from going down this one row for like 30 minutes. I know, I'm a professional blueberry picker. <laughs> Definitely have enough to go home and make Blueberry Hill Surprise. We're gonna start with the pastry crust. Mix together room temperature, unsalted butter, vanilla extract, and two eggs. Add flour, sugar, and salt, then use clean hands to gently spread half the dough on the bottom and up the sides of a greased and floured nine inch pie plate. I should have warned you guys, you will get messy making Blueberry Hill Surprise. Set the pie plate aside and whisk together sugar, flour, and cinnamon in a small bowl. Sprinkle about two tablespoons of the cinnamon mixture over the crust. Pour half the blueberries on the crust and sprinkle with four tablespoons of the cinnamon sugar. Top with your remaining blueberries and the rest of the cinnamon sugar mixture. Using the palm of your hands, flatten the pastry dough and set it over the berries until the pie is totally covered. Lightly brush the pastry dough with milk, make some slits in the top of the crust, and then bake until the crust is golden and the berries are bubbling, about 50 minutes. Remove the pie from the oven and immediately spread a tablespoon of butter on the crust. How good does this look? I wish you guys could smell my house right now. Let cool completely before serving. I love this with vanilla ice cream and whipped cream, and it is so difficult to save it until tomorrow, but we're gonna have to. Hey, Kelly, got my hamburger meat? Yay! Awesome. I'm so excited. I don't think I've ever had your hamburger meat, actually. Oh, I'm so excited for you to try it. I am Please pumped. let me know how you like it. And I will. Please call me, text me if you need anything else. Yay. You can order on our website and pick up here with no Yay. delivery fees. Beautiful. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, dear. Have a good weekend. Good morning. Good morning. Can I get a honey lemonade, please? I cannot come to the farmer's market without getting the honey lemonade from Sabine Creek Farm. It's so amazing. I literally get it as soon as I get to the market so I can sip it while I shop. Baby Groot! Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Can I get a dozen eggs? Hopefully as pretty as this one. Oh my goodness. Hi. 
I think that's all. Okay, I am so happy to see you guys because I actually really need some breakfast. What are some of your favorite things? Okay, so we make some delicious chocolate croissants. Oh. We have Nutella with cho dark chocolate drizzle. <gasps> we have coffee cake, banana nut bread, banana oh my bread, gosh. chocolate chip cookies, oh. and we have gluten-free options as well. Okay, I better do a chocolate croissant and a Nutella croissant. Okay. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Ah, oh, such a beautiful spread today. Goodness. Love the snapdragons. These stay so fresh, so long. But I think I gotta go with the Tala Lilies. Good choice. All right, y'all. I do not think I could have bought anything else. Let's go in the kitchen and get cooking. Ooh. All righty, y'all. We're going to start by making some firework wands. This is super fast and easy, and I think my nieces will love them. So I'm just gonna take a watermelon. You wanna be sure that you have a really heavy watermelon for its size with a big yellow spot. That means it stayed on the ground long enough to get really, really sweet. I'm just gonna start by cutting the watermelon into slices. Ah, how pretty. Oh, is there anything more like summery than watermelon? Now, you don't want it super, super thick because that's gonna make it harder to cut out, but you don't want it super thin either. I'm gonna say that's a less than an inch. All right, so all I'm going to do is cut the watermelon out into stars. You can use whatever size you like. I'm actually gonna do a mix of sizes because I think that would look really cute on the platter. And I'm actually gonna cut some extra for our punch and I'll show you what I do there. Try not to get any of the rind. Ta-da! How cute is that? All right, get our little watermelon stars out. Oh, this is already looking so cute. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bamboo skewer. I'm gonna thread some blueberries right on that skewer. Now you wanna leave enough room that you can comfortably hold it, so don't go all the way down. By the way, this pool party is going to be at my parents' house, which is the pool that I learned to swim in. It's the house I grew up at. I'm very excited my family's coming over. And then we're just gonna add our star. <gasps> Come on. How adorable is that? <laughs> that is so festive. <laughs> How cute is that? I kind of arranged them in a firework display, but of course you could stack them up if you have tons and tons of people coming. I also cut up some extra watermelon stars for our punch. And actually, I'm just gonna toss all of our extra blueberries right in there, because that's all gonna go into our punch, which I'm gonna make poolside. I'm gonna save all my watermelon scraps for my horse because she loves watermelon. So I'm just gonna get cleaned up, go throw on a swimsuit, and I will see you guys at the pool. Alrighty, so the one thing you guys always ask me at my dinners is that you wanna see the behind the scenes, so. Here we go, <laughs> setting up the table. Super exciting, I'm sure. Whew. I love this tablecloth though. I got it on Amazon, super cheap. Wow, I did a spectacularly bad job with that. And we're just setting up, as you can see, a basic card table here. That looks pretty good. My friend Anamika at Enchanted Farmhouse made these gorgeous 4th of July signs. Party like it's 1776. And she made these awesome like firework uh, blocks. You can see there's different stuff on different sides. Something like that. Nice little lantern. I thought this looked nice and kind of like pool-esque. And then I am so proud of this floral bouquet. We've got blue hydrangeas, white roses, and red carnations that I think just look a little bit like fireworks, don't you think? Something like that. Now I know I wanna set my drinks up right here. And <laughs> literally this morning, my dad made me this little drink stand. So perfect, so we'll get that set when we get our drinks in here. And then I think we want some little flags right here. By the way, I do this a lot where I wear a swimsuit with a little skirt as a cover up and it kind of makes a dress and my niece now calls this pulling an Aunt Kate. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and make our punch. This is super easy to make. We are literally just going to do cranberry juice and lemonade. This is obviously a non-alcoholic, but if you want to spike it with some gin or some vodka, that would be equally delicious. Or if you want it to be sparkling, you could add some ginger ale. Just gonna add some cranberry juice right in to my punch bowl. This one's bigger than the other one, so I'm not gonna do all of this. We could, of course, use homemade lemonade, but if our queen, Ina Garten, taught me anything, it's that you do not have to make every single thing from scratch. And I love this lemonade. I did a variation of this for Christmas, too. And then to really make it our star-spangled punch, we're gonna add in some cute little watermelon 
stars. Isn't that just adorable? Just for fun, just to decorate it. And then some blueberries. How freaking adorable is that? <laughs> Ta-da! Lunch is done, so fast. Okay, the table is looking so cute. I am so pumped for my family to get here for our little pool party. I'm gonna make some sliders, and this is gonna be controversial because I'm such a grill girl, right? I grill seafood, I grill bread, I grill dessert, I'll grill a freaking sandwich and vegetables. But when I'm thinking sliders, like I really want all of the juice to stay in the slider. They're so small. I honestly prefer doing them in the house, on a stove, or when I've got a ton like this, in an electric skillet. So we're gonna cook up some sliders, but first I wanna show you how my mom makes her epic potato salad. Boil baby Dutch potatoes for about 25 minutes or until fork tender. While the potatoes are cooking, make the dressing by whisking together Greek yogurt, mayonnaise, fresh dill, and salt and pepper. Pour the yogurt dill dressing over the warm potatoes. It'll be a little bit soupy, but just wait. Refrigerate for two to three hours. See how much the dressing has been absorbed by the potatoes. That's what makes it so delicious. Next, add chopped pickles, crispy bacon, sliced celery, green onions, and hard boiled eggs, and mix it all together really well. When you think it's mixed, just keep mixing. Let the potatoes fall apart. That's part of what makes it so good. This is a great make ahead dish because honestly, it's better the next day. Now, I'm such a purist with sliders, so we are just gonna do a little bit of sea salt right on top. Do your cheese of choice, some lettuce, tomato, sometimes I do bacon. I have a really good bacon blue cheese slider on therosetable.com, but today we're going classic All-American. You might recognize my sliders from Disney Dinner's Cars. I absolutely love a classic slider. We all marveled at how incredibly good this meat is too. Seriously, Ashcraft beef is the best. I love to serve these on King's Hawaiian rolls with lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, and cheese. All right, now we finally get to set the food out. I had a tiered fruit tray with strawberries, cherries, and watermelon slices, a bowl of chips, mom's potato salad, sliders, our firework wands, and of course, the pie. How good does a spread look all put together? This really felt like an easy make-ahead menu too, which makes sense because this is pretty much what we like to eat on the 4th of July most years. The punch was so refreshing, the sliders were so juicy, and my mom's potato salad slaps every time. My niece Cassie loved her little firework wand, and she even loved the punch. Now, of course, I do love Blueberry Hill Surprise with ice cream, but it was just too hot to set the ice cream out on the table, so we just added it when everyone was ready to eat pie before hitting the pool. Well guys, I hope you had as much fun watching this episode as I had of planning this party. For these recipes and more, visit therosetable.com. Happy 4th of July! Baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark, do 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 do.